this was a joke. I completely agree with you. For 20 years, it's 20 years away. Not anymore. What we've seen in the last one or two years uh, has been completely breakthrough, completely unshocking in terms of the development that we've seen because of one very simple reason, AI. We now have a way to start crunching data, make the right algorithms, make the right analysis around this very, very complicated, almost impossible technology in an, in an enormous way that we have never seen in the past. We are getting very, very close. Actually, we already start to see the first commercial application today. It's not 2030, it's not 2040, it's today. In 2030, we are expecting a quantum advantage, which means the quantum computing is going to be up, running with no real air, with no real problems, better than traditional computing. And roughly five to six years after that, we'll have quantum supremacy. So we are, the world of quantum supremacy, which is going to change everything, is roughly 10 years from here. You say it's going to change everything. What exactly is it going to change? And is it going to be a bigger moment than, let's say, the internet moment or the AI moment? Big time, of course. It's, it's not going to be comparable. We live in a world of data. We live in a world that every day we generate roughly 400 quintillion bytes of data that we're using only 1% of it. Quantum computing is the first machine that can start analyzing all this data in no time. Traditional computing does not give us does not give us enough abilities to crunch data and very complex problems that humanity is facing in a real way. For example, if you want to model a molecule of penicillin, which is roughly 41 atoms, that's roughly about it. No traditional computing, even a supercomputer can do that. It's going to take it, it can do it, but it's just going to take it longer than the universe existed in terms of timing. Quantum computing can do it in minutes. Think about it, it can calculate everything. It can start using all the information out there. It can do all the complex calculations, analysis, science that we always only dream about in minutes, even faster than that. So we are about to almost achieve everything in, in, in no time. This is a, the most radical technology that we've ever seen. Of course, the internet revolution, the digital revolution, the mobile revolution have all led us to this moment that everything is about to explode. Everything is about to move, not exponentially, but vertically. It's, uh, it's incredible to hear you categorize the power of this transformation, Haim. You also note that whoever wins the quantum race will gain an unprecedented geopolitical, technological, and economic advantage. Who is poised to win? Sure, you're completely right, Caroline. And with when we think about the world is all about it's all about technology. It's all about eventually it's all about the building block of technology, which is all about processing power and semiconductors. Right now, semiconductors industry, computing power is, is an American technology. We can debate from here onward up until how close China is, how close Europe is, but eventually Euro US is the one that is dominating. Quantum computing is the first technology that will reset everything, that will put everybody back and, and, and square one and can change everything. So we are starting to see governments rushing, investing billions of tens of billions of dollars up until, by the way, up until a year ago, the total investments in the world were roughly 42 billion dollars just from governments. I'm not talking about the private sector, which is 10 times bigger than that. Um, 35% of this number actually came from China. Because China is not the leader right now in technology, because China is still relying on U.S. technology, semiconductors, um, China is investing a lot in that. U.S. is actually number two. The num number, sorry, is number three. Number two is actually the EU, which is also investing quite a lot in that. Again, I'm taking the private sector out of that because most of the private money is still focused in the United States. The startups, the big companies that are involved in everything is still much more dominating the United States, but from a sovereign perspective, this is, uh, this is led today in terms of investment by China. If you think about what that means from discoveries, from encryption, from, uh, from industrials, from everything that we're talking about, this, when this can change everything, of course, that means that which, a, any government that is leading that has a huge advantage and everything could change.